Hi everyone, it's Jen with Spirited Saturdays and this week we're talking about recovering from everything, whatever that may be for you, like if you are struggling with an eating disorder, if you're struggling with self-injury, if you're struggling with any kind of multiple addictions going on, multiple urges. Um, in addition to recovering from multiple um, diagnoses, you know, we're talking about recovery for, as a whole. And I mean, there's a lot that I can can potentially contribute to this. I mean, I, I, just based on my, my history, and I could vouch uh, for um, the... Um, I, I could I could personally vouch that vouch that it is possible to recover from from it all because what you're doing I think is really um, you know you you are tackling something from the root and when you do that it's not that easy to compensate with something else if you're really dealing if you're really resolving to tackle something, to target something at the root. When you do that, it will be, I think you, that we are less likely to go toward another behavior or to go backward into some other symptom if we are addressing the root cause um, and not using something else to mask that. Um, not to say that that won't ever happen, but um, if we can, if we stay consistent on that path, then I think what happens is that we learn to become aware of when something else is cropping up, so that we can catch it and re re root it, reroute it. Um, so I think yeah, taking tackling something from the root is is very important. You know, staying grounded is very important. Remembering that the struggle is below the surface is very important and handling one thing at a time is very important too so if you are taking um, if you're dealing with depression for example then it's important that you monitor the medication that if you are taking medication it's important that you monitor the medication for the depression and that you keep that steady and stable throughout the entirety of your process and that when you start getting better from one thing you don't just stop the medication or lessen the medication you keep um, keep in checking in with your doctor keep keep that consistent so that the other stuff can uh, become and stay more manageable so that's definitely compartmentalize keep the keep you know just because an aspect of your life is getting better doesn't mean that you can pay less attention to another aspect of your life. Keep all of them at the forefront, but deal with them in the ways that are individually best to deal with them. So, you know, maybe it's not medication, but maybe it's at least consistent therapy. Keep, you know, keep... And, and when you do go to a therapist, make sure that it's someone who can address all of the issues and kind of connect them all together and it's it's kind of artful and artful in that way so you want to keep you know make sure that the person or the people that you're seeing are good at, at at allowing you to remember how one thing affects another and are good at allowing you to keep tabs on each individual thing that you're going through while being able to see them um, as as a whole it's important to yeah to see that these problems as as parts of a whole so you're you know um, that that's very that that helped me a lot you know because when I switched from cutting to the eating disorder um, clearly I was not address I had not been addressing the problem from the root as a whole and um, what ultimately helped me was when I did decide to recover from all of it I used a lot of the tools that I had learned when I was recovering from self-injury. I used them to recover from the eating disorder, and then I used them to deal with life after that. So um, it's just, yeah, keep 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 yourself in check uh, in that in that way, and don't let yourself deceive yourself. And that's why having a treatment team is really important. Also, when you start to feel better in any of these areas, don't just assume that you don't need treatment anymore, that you're fine, um, because a lot of the process is stabilization and testing yourself 
in that stabilization period and testing yourself in, stabilized in whatever component you may be addressing in that moment. So if it's weight restoration, it's really important that you stay, you know, weight restoration, behavior stabilization, whatever that may be for you. It's important that you keep yourself monitored in the stabilization part of it. Um, that's a one can be one of the hardest parts of recovery, really, the maintenance of um, behaviors and the maintenance of abstinence from behaviors. That is, and. Um, and yes, yeah, so whether it's that or whether it's self-injury or wh whatever, you know, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, um, you know, or whether you're feeling better, you know, if, uh, if you're, if you have depression, whether you're feeling more balanced, if you have bipolar, um, more connected, if you dissociate, you know, all that stuff still needs to be kept tabs on, you know, and then, and then you decide with the person that you're seeing, um, how to eventually taper off, uh, the, the structured help or the medication or whatever it may be. But that's something that you really work together as a team because it's important it's important to trust the people that you're working with also and not just trust not just trust yourself. It's, it's important to trust yourself for sure, but it's also good to remember that when you're in the middle of things and you're in the thick of them, um, what you may believe to be totally rational and true may really not be. And that would have been something that was hard for me to hear back in the day. But in hindsight, I see that it was very, very, very true. I really thought at times I was being completely rational. I even thought like I was the only rational one in the room. I honestly thought that. And then um, if I think back now, I'm like, Oh my God, those thoughts were wholly, completely eating disordered. I cannot believe I was convinced otherwise. So it's just important to have that reality check and have that check in, you know, there as you go about, you know, things and you, you progress and you improve and, and also don't get down on yourself. If you take a step back, there's nothing wrong with that. You learn from that and move forward. And that applies to everything that applies to every part of holistic recovery. Um, by that, I just mean addressing the whole, the whole of you. So yeah, um, I'm trying not to go into a shameful place. There's no need for that. That has no place. Th that is no mandatory, obligatory place in recovery. Shame really, really doesn't. Um, I know I put myself through a lot of that, a lot of guilt, and there is absolutely no reason for it. If somebody could just have hammered that into me, that sounds really harsh. Um, if somebody could have just really put that into perspective for me at the time, it might have helped. So I'm just, I don't know. I just want you to know that seriously, shame, guilt, that is completely, that does not have to be there in order for you to get better. Like, and it's, it's such a, a hindrance, really. It's, it's hard enough that you feel you, went back, you know, but that's all you need. That's all you need. You don't need the being hard on yourself on top of that. Seriously, tomorrow's a new day. Now is a new moment, you know, appreciate the process, appreciate that you're trying, you know, and have that support system set up so that you can check in to do something differently next time. And trial and error, it's a long, it can be a long process that requires a lot of patience, but it's so, so worth it. So all my best to you in really recovering, you know, from the whole of it, you know, and really, really reaching the best version of you that, that you can be, that you know yourself to be. Um, you know, a lot of this too, really the therapy part really involves addressing like root issues, you know, and things like that. So, so sometimes when you do that, that like worse feelings will arise, you know, which is why it's important to continue in the therapy because even if you are really getting to the bottom of those issues, it may spark, you know, um, more depression, more urges, you know, so it's very important to kind of keep that all balanced as best as you can um, and consistent, you know, the help should be consistent. It should be structured to the best of, of your ability. Okay, hope that made some sense. Feel like I rambled a bit, but I hope I felt like I had a lot to cover. Have a great week and talk to you soon. Bye.